the sad heart Don't be discouraged though I realize It's hard to take courage in a world full of people You can lose sight of it all in the darkness Inside you makes you feel so small But I see your true colors shining through See your true colors That's why I love you So don't be afraid To let them show your true colors True colors Beautiful Ooh, like a rain Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Now, this is a beautiful song. This is True Colours by Cindy Lauper. Uh, you know, a classic pop song that's going to be around for forever. It's uh, wonderful. Uh, on guitar, it's kind of interesting because there isn't any guitar on the original recording. Not that I can hear anyway. So uh, we've got a bit of a free reign on the way that we play it. Um, I'm going to teach you the kind of the keyboard part on guitar, which for the main riff thing, this... Uh because it's such a, you know, iconic kind of riff. Uh, if you've got that down, the rest of the song, you know, you can kind of play around with it, and you should. Um, I'm going to show you, take you through, like, what the proper chords are and, and the, the order that you play them, and I'll show you a few tricks along the way. But really, it's one for you to kind of explore on your own a little bit. Um, I'm going to be teaching it to you mostly with this two chords per bar, nearly all of the way through the song, I think, is uh, two chords per bar, except for maybe once or twice. On the original recording, some of them are what we call pushed, so they come a little bit earlier than you might think they're going to. Now, for me to write that out would be really difficult for me to write out and difficult for you to read. It would look ugly on the page. So I've just left it as being this two chords kind of played straight. And really, you've got to listen to the original recording and decide which of the pushes you're going to incorporate because it's, you know, you, you can make up your own arrangement. There isn't a guitar that we're copying here, you know. Um, so really, so long as you're getting the bass note in the right place, played with your thumb usually, then the rest of it, you know, it's, it's pretty free. Uh, there are some interesting chord grips, so uh, what I think we're going to do is go to a close-up, and I'll show you this whole, pretty much the whole tune as a close-up, just so you can really see the chord grips that I'm using and some of the little tricks. Um, so uh, let's do that now. Let's start off with this riff here. So we've got little finger on the thinnest string, third fret, first finger on the first fret of the second string. And we're going to play the open A string, the fifth string, and the thinnest string at the same time. Then open B string, put your first finger down, and then the thinnest string again. It doesn't really matter what fingers you use to pick these ones. Okay, now our second finger is going down in the second fret of the fifth string. And again, we're plucking the fifth string and the thinnest string together. Open second string, first finger down, and then plucking the thinnest string. So this is the A minor. G with the B bass, or C over B. Doesn't really matter which one you want to call it. Then to C, so third finger is now going on to the third fret of the fifth string. Again, fifth string and thinnest together. Open, first finger, first fret, second string. And this time, we finish with the second finger in the second fret of the third string. Now we've got a, a tricky part here. So thumb is reaching over to play this F note. So once you've hit this... That second finger's gone down the note A. Thumb has to reach over and play the F bass note. Now, many of you are going to find that difficult. If you've not done that kind of thumb over technique before, it's a little tricky. Note that it's kind of using the side of the thumb there. That's the part that's doing it. It's not really the flat of the thumb like this. It's kind of the, the outside edge of there of your thumb, inside your grip. So you're kind of doing that motion there to get the, 
get the thumb down. So, uh, now at that point, third finger can come off as well. So you really, you're just after that note, the second finger to stay down while you play the bass note. Then you've got the open B string, first finger, first fret again. And then you're gonna play that note A again, the note with the second finger on the third string. Practice it really slowly. The, the, the tricky part is just going to be getting that thumb over and making sure all of the notes sound really good because that's with a tune like this, it's just all about getting those notes sounding really nice and not getting too, them too loud or pingy or kind of muted or whatever. That's really the big deal. So let's have a look at the chords in the verse. So we've got A minor, G with a B bass, okay, just using the second finger and the fourth finger there, middle four strings only. C to C with an E bass. Now, to get a C with an E bass, really, you can just play C and then pick the thicker string there. But it gets kind of muddy if you've got this C note and the E ringing out at the same time. So what I'd recommend is you go C and then C with the E bass. You lift off your third finger, push up a little bit with your second finger to make sure that fifth string is muted. And then you've got, that's a nicer way of playing a C with an E bass. Some of you might look at it like it's an A minor 7 with an E bass, and you could call it that too, it doesn't really matter. C with an E is what we're going to call it for now. Now we've got this interesting F add 9. Now this starts off like a regular kind of small F chord on the thinnest four strings, but we add our little finger on the third fret of the thinnest string. If you can, you can add the bass note there on the thicker string. It's up to you whether you add that in or not. It'll sound fine without it. But if you can, you might want to add that one on. F, then to A minor, to G. So the first part, A minor, G with a B bass. C, C with an E bass. F add nine, F, A minor, G. To a C, D minor, C with an E bass again, to F, A minor, G, F to C. So let me run through that one more time. So this is just half a bar on each chord, A minor, G with a B bass, C, C with an E bass, F add 9, F, A minor, G, C to D minor, C with an E bass to F, A minor, G. Now, I just think that sounds really it works great in this tune. It's just an F chord, but I'm starting off without the second finger and then hammering it down and then playing the fourth string on its own. Then moving to a C chord, picking the middle four strings and hammering that second finger down. Just kind of sounds a little bit like the record and I think it works kind of nice. So that's the verse, the, the chord sequence. Now, I was just doing finger style, and all I'm doing really is making sure I play the bass. A minor, the bass on the beats, well, like when the chord changes, and the rest of it's kind of whatever I happen to feel like doing or what my fingers decide to do. So really, at this point, you can start to experiment a little bit. Those of you that have done my folk finger style course might like to experiment with little lines in between too. Once you understand the relationship between the chords and the scales, all of this song's in the key of C. So you could have A minor.
So I'm just adding in now little notes from the C major scale into my improvisation. So you might want to check out that uh, the idea of that in the folk fingerstyle course after you've learned how to play this in a basic way. So let's check out the chorus now. So we've got F, C, G sus4, G. Right, so F, you could do a regular F if you want. Doesn't really matter, I'm doing it this way because it kind of feels nice in this style. To C, now G sus4. So we need to be just using our third and fourth fingers for this G. So third fret muted. Make sure that third finger is laying flat to mute the fifth string. Three open strings and middle finger. And if you put your first finger down, there in the first fret of the second string, I'm trying to keep my second finger out of the way. I wouldn't normally uh, cram it up like that. But and then you can lift it off for G. So G sus, G, F. So beginning of the chorus again, F, C, G sus, G, two, F, C with an E bass, F again, sus, G. So this is just happening on one beat, on that's on beat three, beat four. F, C, D minor, A minor. Now here, F over C. So now our bass note being played is the note C. But we popped an F chord underneath. F, C, F over C to C. To G sus4. You can resolve it if you want. I don't think it does on the record. Again, let's look at the chorus, some of the things you can might kind of want to experiment with. F. You really can experiment here a lot. You know, I'm just trying to give you some ideas here for adding in the extra notes as well. But it's all just, particularly these kind of songs, it's, don't be afraid to keep it simple. If I was doing this at a show, it's more likely I'd be doing... wouldn't be trying to add in too many things just a few it can it can be as simple as you like and it will still work because it's such a big tune I'm sure you're going to enjoy experimenting with this song it really is loads of fun in fact I'm really enjoying teaching it and you know explaining it to you guys and I'm finding new things myself all the time it's definitely definitely a cool fun song to explore don't get too hung up on trying to do this or trying to do it particularly that way you know I, I wanted to give you some ideas but don't feel like, oh, I have to do it, you know, the same as that, because you don't. You really, you should be experimenting. Um, I mentioned before this uh, folk fingerstyle course. Uh, there's an a interesting kind of section in the middle of it. It's called the Chord Scale Relations, where I teach you how you can incorporate scales and chords together. And this is a perfect example of, of where you might want to use that technique. So uh, after you finish doing this, uh, one of the intermediate modules is the folk fingerstyle module. So you might want to go and either check out the whole thing which is, the whole thing is kind of very much a folk finger style course, as in its title, uh, but some of those concepts like the, the chord scale relations, they work in any style, you know, so that you, you know, feel free to just cherry pick those lessons if you wanted to check out that little bit. Um, I hope you enjoy playing it as much as I do, and I'll see you for another lesson very soon. Take care of yourselves, bye bye.